I went and interviewed where that was a partner at the time. I was so impressed because there was this woman who just immediately commanded the room and she was pregnant, which was really impressive to me too, to see someone so successful and also a mom. I was three years out of law school. I'd never seen a minority woman, much less a woman, and certainly not a pregnant woman, commanding a room like that. Yvette has risen to the top, but she did not do it climbing on top of other women. She did it literally bringing up a group of women with her. This is a person, you know, whose parents were immigrants, who really pulled herself up from her bootstraps, and now she is leading an entire international law firm. But my favorite part about it is that she did this in a way that brought up everyone with her. I am just aware of countless women and men that she has mentored and helped. She really had to figure these things out and blaze that trail for a Cuban American and she has blazed the heck out of it. Yvette has boundless energy, but she's bold in a way that accompanies that energy. We had hired a local counsel in California, and I don't mean a small local counsel. In one of the cases, one of the firm's partners had said to the client, after we had not prevailed at a couple of hearings, that he thought that the judge just didn't like women. And he recommended that we have men appear in front of the judge going forward. And I'll never forget, Yvette said, unacceptable. She threatened to call the media. She threatened to tell the associate at the firm that were female and completely turned it on in a way that it was just incredible. The demand of Margaret Brent for a vote and a voice is completely Yvette. I once asked Yvette's mother, how did you instill this confidence in this person? And her mom just looked at me and shook her head and she said she came out walking that boldly. Yvette is a force to be reckoned with. Just the fact that she is the first Latina managing partner of any large law firm, um, that she's leading Sidley Austin, it's really awe-inspiring. She builds this connection with you and she has a way of just making you feel like you've known each other for a long time. So she's a very warm and open person. All of the teams that she brings for any kind of a project, they always include women and minorities. And she's not just paying lip service. You actually see those women and those minorities on the matters working as the attorneys that are handling these various matters. She's always looking for ways to bring people along with her, to make other people successful. She wants to make the road easier for everybody and make sure that everybody is going to be able to progress and be successful. Throughout growing up, I got to see how her hard work has really paid off and she's really served as a huge mentor, both to me, but also to all of my friends. Now that I'm older, knowing how hard her job is and what a time commitment it is, now that I can really see it, is really incredible to me because Back when I was growing up, she was always there, always at every dance recital, every soccer game. She is this really incredible, impressive woman in her field, but ever since the start of her career, she's really been a huge supporter of women, both in the workplace and her personal life. She's always really stuck with the women in her life through everything, and I think that's really continued throughout her whole career. She's, you know, never left anyone behind and always supported the women, both in her firm and in her personal life, to the fullest extent. So I think that's really a huge reason why she's really deserving of this award. Wow, thank you. And thank you to everybody that spoke on this. I, I'm so grateful. And to be in this room live, I'm so glad the pandemic is over. How about everybody else? Um, and for it to be full, thank you for being here. I was afraid they were, gonna, they were turning people away. And I said, no, 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 just have them come in. We want a full house for this to honor everybody. Uh, I, want, I do want to thank uh, the ABA for this incredible honor and for the team that nominated me. I cannot say this is the Oscars of the Women Lawyers Awards is what I was telling my colleagues and I am so honored to be here. But can we talk about Margaret Brent for a second? Uh, I had never heard of Margaret Brent until I heard about this award. And I'm a little bit sad about that because after all, I did go to school here in the United States. Uh, I did go to elementary and middle school and law school and Margaret Brent never came up. So I spent some time studying Margaret Brent and this is what I've decided. If Margaret was around, we'd both be good friends, and I'll tell you why. So here she is in Colonial, Maryland. 
Her parents, um, like my parents, were immigrants, except she was an immigrant from England. She came from a wealthy family. Mine came off the boat in Cuba and, and in airplanes. And she wouldn't take no for an answer. In fact, she wouldn't take no for the fact that you couldn't be a lawyer. She became a lawyer, the first lawyer. And we're now just learning that. Thank you for the ABA for this award and for us to know this story. Second, she was a litigator, and I'm a litigator, but here's the deal about her. She never lost a case. And for those of you that know me, I love a winner. So I know that we would have been friends and I would have been competitive and said, well, what's going on here? I have lost a case, unfortunately. It only happened recently. It was, it was hard, I'll tell you. I never, I never knew what that felt like until recently and that was just painful. Um, but the other thing about her is she fought for others. She did pro bono work. When the soldiers were not getting paid for fighting for Maryland, she went out there and she got the money. And she did it pro bono. And what a leader to do that. So much so that the people in that era were saying to, advocating on her behalf to become a lawyer. The other thing that was interesting about Margaret, and it tells you the story of why her story should be told more and more, is that at the time when she came, she had a hard decision to make. Like the decision that so many women have to make, unfortunately because of our gender, and that decision was whether she would stay married or uh, whether she would stay single or ever marry. We don't know whether she ever wanted to marry, but here's the thing. She had to make a choice because if she did get married, she'd lose all this property that had been given to her. She'd lose all her rights. She'd become a chattel. And I gotta tell you, I think for me the decision would have been very easy. I would have stayed single too. So I know we would have been friends. Um, but how unfair how unfair that she was advocating in the 1600s for the right to vote as an immigrant, as an American, as somebody that was fighting for people and for soldiers and that that vote wasn't granted. How unfair that she had to make those choices. And so what I say is, this award I accept on behalf of Margaret Brent and for all the women that came after that, that made it possible and the men that made it possible for us to be here. And it's a shame that we weren't friends, but I know there are many Margaret Brents here, and Margaret Brents don't just have to be women. They can be men too. And thank you for being here on this award and to honor this. A constant throughout my life has been my family. My mother and father who have supported me and who was the unpaid caregiver for so many years so that I could have these three wonderful children who came, uh, Elena and Alec and Aiden and who are taking a red eye tonight to their jobs. Thank you so much for this. I really, I cannot tell you, and I, I say the same as a judge, for everything that I've done in my life, and I have said this, the grit that you have and the perseverance that you have and who you are becoming as people is the thing that I'm the most blessed for, and thank you. It makes me wanna cry um, to think about you in that way. And to my husband of 32 years, who, if anybody um, knows this, if you have been a lawyer in big law and you do not have that support system, you cannot accomplish what I have accomplished. This is because I have a husband who is a lawyer too, who was in big law and had his support throughout it. I met him as a summer associate in my first year as a summer. He was a second year summer. He was telling me how to shepherdize Texas cases because I didn't know. And uh, by the end of the summer, we decided that we wanted to get married. We got married a year later because I do have Cuban parents. And by the way, the Jamaicans and the Cubans can compete on which is the tougher mom. Um, but you are the love of my life and I am so grateful to everything that you have done for 32 years to make this all possible. Not to mention the pictures that he took in the green room when nobody else would. Um, but I also want to thank my law firm. Um, I am the, the only one here right now that represents the American sort of big law firms. I am the first woman running a top seven revenue firm, 3 billion, 5,000 employees, 21 offices. And I say this not because I'm proud that I've done this. I say this because I'm sad that I am the first one to be that and to be the first Hispanic woman or man to run a top 20 firm. And the reason I think that's important is because big law has a lot of money. Uh, and big law influences a lot of organizations and can donate. And so I thank my law firm that after so many other law firms did not do this, after us in 157 years that I am the first woman and for the support of all my colleagues that are here in our built to win,
firm that has acknowledged and has over 50% of its offices run by women, 40% of our management committee. Thank you for being here and I want to acknowledge you that came from all over, from New York and Florida and Texas, <laughs> California. <laughs> on their Sunday in Washington, D.C. to be here with me. Thank you. It means so much to me that I have your confidence and am your colleague and your friend. And I'm very proud of my firm for all that it is doing to move forward the path for men and women, but in particular what they have accomplished for women. I also want to thank my alma mater, University of Miami. Uh, Dean Yellen is here with his wife and Georgie. I would have not gone to law school or undergraduate, and let me say this very clearly, if I had not had a merit scholarship. I got a full academic scholarship. I was the valedictorian of my class. My parents could have not afforded University of Miami or any school, and I was off not to go to college. But for University of Miami scholarship, I got to go to college, and the rest is history. And in the light of this decision that just happened, although mine was not a scholarship, it was based on merit, we know that that is really gonna impact people like me being able to go to school. So I encourage all of you that can support scholarships for first generation, men, women of any color, please lean in and do this heavily because not, we're not going to be able to compete. And then, you know, finally, I do wanna say that I look forward to a time where we no longer need awards for trailblazing women like the women that are here. That we think of that as a time where my grandchildren, and yes, there's a little pressure there on the first row, are talking to me and they're saying, Grammy, Mimi, what do you mean women couldn't be lawyers? What was that all about? What did gender have anything to do with being an astronaut, which I was told I couldn't be, or being a lawyer? Why was that the case? And I'm going to say what my friend Angela Fontana says, you know, they were dinosaurs. And you know what happened to the dinosaurs? They became extinct. And because we're from Texas, we say this, they became extinct, they became oil, and we put them in our SUVs. So don't be a dinosaur. Move forward, okay? Thank you so much to all of you for this wonderful award, and I look forward to celebrating with you after this.